from Joke to the Week with Ali Joffrey. Why did the nurse need a red pen at work? In case she needed to draw blood. What do you call a pig that does karate? A pork chop. What do you call a train carrying bubblegum? A choo-choo train. Why couldn't the pony sing a lullaby? She was a little horse. What does a zombie vegetarian eat? Grains. That's all, that's all I have for you today. Have a great day. Hey guys, welcome back to the music genre. For this week's video, we will be talking about K-pop. And since I'm not an expert on this genre, I brought in an expert so they can talk to us about it. Please welcome Amira Joffrey in grade 10C. I started liking K-pop around early 2018, which is when I'd say BTS started getting popular like 2000s globally like 2017, 2018 and I was first attracted by their music and uh, and then when I took like a deeper dive and found, like saw their personalities and um, the, like the messages behind their music it just brought me more into the fandom and yeah so I've been an ARMY for like almost three years now. I found out about BTS from my friend. She showed me the DNA MV music video when it came out and I didn't, I thought they were cool but I didn't really like, the song didn't really like uh, bring me in at that moment and she also showed me twice, uh, twice likey music video, uh, but I didn't get into girl groups until much later, and, uh, yeah. K-pop getting big so fast is part of the Hallyu wave, which is, uh, the wave of Korean entertainment becoming more global, such as K-drama Korean movies, so Korean movies like Parasite winning the Oscars, and, uh, Korean drama getting more popular, and also Korean music is also, K-pop is also, uh, becoming more global, like we're seeing in the, the fourth generation of K-pop groups, which are the new groups that are coming out, they are, um, they're starting with a bigger global fan base than their local fan base in South Korea. And I think this is because of the the globalization of the world now. It's like with a with the click of my finger I can see the news from somewhere across the world. K pop is well structured, it always give um there always there's lots of fan service and it's a sense of community and um, also there's something for everyone. Like if you like rap you can find people who are more focused on rap, if you like pop sluts, you can find ballad songs, or if you like a more uh, dark style, you can find like dark, or you want cute and light and fluffy, then you can also find that. So there's basically something for everyone if you look for it. Just not like if you break the surface, there's like a whole thing. And I think people really like the diversity of K-pop and all. Yeah, like no group is the same. Now I know K-pop is cool and all, but what is K-pop without its loyal fans? You may not know this, but K-pop fans play a huge role in political activism for the younger generations. In June, the BTS ARMY reportedly collected and raised over $1 million for the Black Lives Matter movement, matching BTS's own donation of a million dollars. They dominate viral hashtagging, and this year they were even able to interfere with tickets at Trump rallies. The Black Lives Matter movement was became more aware and some of that is due to the K-pop fans. At the end of May, the K-pop supporters flooded a police department scanner app for Dallas, Texas with, with fan cams after the police department asked citizens to submit videos of protesting activity. They spam racist, inaccurate, and ignorant hashtags with K-pop videos or, or photos. They are probably the most accurate represent representation of what cancel culture should look like. For example, when a group messes up by saying something or doing something racist, controversial, or inappropriate to their standards, they are able to cancel them very quickly. I think we could all learn something from K-pop fans. For example.